Okay guys, so it is currently December of 2013, meaning, of course, that the new year is almost upon us. And in lieu of the coming new year, I thought I would look back on my year a bit and give you my top five highlights of 2013. Ready, set, go. Number five, the Mountain Goats. Now this one may sound a little bit insignificant and it will definitely make my parents roll their eyes a bit, but the Mountain Goats have pretty much been the soundtrack of my year. I discovered the Mountain Goats in January when I watched the Vlogbrothers Evening of Awesome at Carnegie Hall on YouTube. And since then, they've become one of my favorite bands of all time, and their albums The Sunset Tree and Transcendental Youth have been on repeat since spring. If you've never listened to them before, I would definitely recommend doing so. They're also one of John Green's favorite bands. I'd recommend starting out with the songs Birth of Serpents, This Year, and The Dios Brothers. Number four, getting back into reading. This year marked the first time since fifth grade that I willingly read anything, really. I started out with John Green's The Fault in Our Stars, and since then I haven't been able to stop. Aside from The Fault in Our Stars, I have also read John Green's An Abundance of Catherine's, Paper Towns, Neil Gaiman's Coraline, and T. Michael Martin's The End Games, which are all extremely good. I'm currently taking a break from reading so that I can have more time to work on scripts for videos. But the next book that I read will most likely be Doctor Who Dead of Winter by James Goss, which I will probably start in January. Speaking of which, number three, Doctor Who. For the longest time, I kept hearing a lot of people online talk about some weird TV show called Doctor Who. I had heard so much about it, but never seen a single episode. And it wasn't until I started listening to the band Chameleon Circuit that I actually expressed an interest in checking out the series. I made sure to educate myself on the basics of the show before I started watching it, but unfortunately at the time I did not have Hulu Plus like I do now, and I wasn't about to spend $20 to $50 to buy a DVD of a show that I may end up hating. So in terms of actually watching the show, I was at the mercy of BBC America. And the first episode that I ever watched was Aliens of London with Christopher Eccleston from Series 1. And while it was good, I was really not all that impressed. However, a week or so later I saw my second ever episode of Doctor Who this one from Series 5 with Matt Smith. This episode specifically was Vincent and the Doctor, which remains to this day my favorite episode of Doctor Who of all time. But becoming a Whovian did more than just make me want to acquire all the Doctor Who stuff I could find. It also presented me with some great opportunities, namely my participation in the Nerdist and BBC America's Doctor Who Week. And I even got to go to a one-night-only screening of the Day of the Doctor where I met some awesome fellow Whovians. Number 2. Paramore Concert. Does this one really need any explanation? By now I'm sure that a lot of you know that my favorite band of all time is Paramore, and it's no secret that I like Hayley Williams a little more than I should. I've been wanting to see Paramore live ever since 2009, and this year I finally got to mark it off my bucket list. They played at a small venue in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was maybe only about eight yards away from the stage. It was amazing to finally get to see them live after all these years, and especially amazing being so close to the stage. I am without a doubt going to see them again the next time they come to town. And I could go on for hours and hours about this show, not even kidding, but I think it would be easier to just show you guys a clip. And number one, all of the YouTube stuff. I started my brief history series on a whim back in February, and I genuinely had no idea that it would grow to become what it is today. Of course, the real traction to my channel did not come until later in April when my Smosh video got featured on Smosh.com. And at the time that I released that video, I had about 130 subscribers, and now I've got about 10,500? What? Since my video was featured on Smosh.com, I have either worked with or come in contact with the likes of Wheezy Waiter, Dan Brown, Live Lava Live, Rhett and Link, Dot Lotl, Jax Films, Dan Doby, Daily Grace, Philip DeFranco, The Vlog Brothers, Mika Kitty, and most recently, The Nerdist. I've also made some great friends over the year like Panikin, Sarah, Jay and Ben, T. Michael Martin, and anyone and everyone who talks to me on Twitter or watches my content. You are all fantastic, and I cannot articulate how grateful I am to have you guys. So all in all, 2013 was an amazing year, and I've already got some big things in store for 2014. One of them being, if all goes according to plan, an episode of A Brief History featuring one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. And seriously, I am really excited for 2014. I cannot wait to see what happens over the course of this year. I have quite a lot of stuff to put on my wall this week, so I'm going to have to go through them a bit faster than usual. This Doctor Who collage is from Julia Cheesebro, awesome name. This Space Rainbow Fairy of Dreams and this 10,000 subscriber celebration drawing come from Sea Turtle on Twitter. This female aviator drawing comes from Kaylee, and is this gonna become a thing? Like, I don't know who this girl is, nor do I know what she's from, but am I just gonna keep getting drawings of her in the mail? Because... That's actually pretty cool. In fact, I think we should name this girl. Leave any possible names for her in the comments below. I'll pick one and we'll name her in the next vlog. And finally, a girl named Zoe sent me what is possibly the most disturbing thing I've ever received in my P.O. box. Or from anyone in general, for that matter. I'm actually a little bit embarrassed to show this. 
Ah, hmm. Yeah. You know, I used to always think that there was no possible way that one could make Haley Williams ugly, but... Yeah. I have to put this on my wall now, don't I? But seriously, Zoe, Sea Turtle, Kaylee, and Julia, thank you all so much for your letters and your drawings, and they will be going up on my wall right now. If you have something you would like to send to me to put on the wall behind me, or that you would just like me to have, please send it to Ryder Bergen, P.O. Box 5403, Statesville, North Carolina, 28687. And real quick before I go, I just want to say that there will be no new video next week. I'll be taking a break for Christmas. But I will be starting the new year off right with a brand new episode of A Brief History. But until then, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I'll see you in the new year, guys. DFTBA. So as I was filming that video, I got a package in the mail, uh, something I can't put on my wall, but I just wanted to show it to you in this video. A few weeks ago, I received the book Aragon from one of my viewers in the mail, and so I believe the username was or something along those lines, sent me the entire series of Aragon new in plastic. What? Thank you. And you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye.